China just made one of the most aggressive tech decoupling moves in its history, but not many people are talking about it. The Chinese government, that's because not many people are technology nerds like myself, to be fair. The Chinese government has issued new instructions requiring all state-funded data centers to only use domestically made AI chips. Domestically meaning made in China and data centers, meaning basically the computer brains that power all the AI that anyone anywhere uses, DeepSeek, your ChatGPT, your, your Claude, your Grok, for God's sake, even, right? Elon Musk needs his data centers. We're talking about a, not a complete ban. We're talking about potentially, eventually a complete ban. But now uh, it's starting up a ban on NVIDIA, on AMD, on Intel chips, all the big American chip makers or chip designers cut off from the Chinese market. Now, this is huge, right? It's a preparatory decoupling move that drastically reduces China's reliance on their great power rival, America. And it also is part of the move by the Chinese state to try and fast track their own domestic, meaning internally made Chinese, chip development to prevent this critical technology being used as a weapon against the Chinese state in the future if things get hairy and scary. Now, this isn't America where policy is sort of, you know, let the president roll up a bunch of tissue paper, get it wet with the, you know, sink and chuck it up and see what sticks to the ceiling. And if it falls off the ceiling and hits you in the face, leaving your face watery, soggy, okay, roll back that policy. That one didn't stick. It didn't work, right? This isn't America. Right? This is China. Right? China is a lot more stable in their policy, in their governance, ultimately because their entire governance model is centralized, for better or worse. Right? It's not a four-term presidential democracy, for better or worse. I'm not, you know, there's strengths and weaknesses to the Chinese model, obviously. Um, but in the case of technology progress, in the case of setting mid and long term goals that an administration is not going to do. And then the next administration might be like, nah, banda, I don't you know, that's not my favorite color. And then the next administration, uh, the next administration comes back and says, no, no, that was my favorite color. Let's start it up again. Or there's, there's no ship captain that keeps being changed. Right. There's one ship captain in China and his name is Xi Jinping. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously it's not just him. It's um, the standing committee. And uh, anyway, China doesn't make knee jerk reactions in the same way, analytically speaking, as the American state when it comes to uh, policy, especially in this technology domain. So it's not a total ban on Western chips just like that, like, ta you know, Trump's tariffs being imposed a day, you know, overnight. It's not like that or being threatened overnight. It's not like that. But the direction is clear of the Chinese state. The state has ordered no further orders for testing uh, an acquisition of Western made computer chips for data centers and encourages instead use of domestic chips and development of better domestic chips to replace those really capable, really powerful uh, Western chips. Data centers less than 30% complete in the Middle Kingdom, uh, as it were, are being ordered to rip out the already installed chips and install domestic ones over 30 percent if your data center is you know quite uh, uh far along in its development and it's got western chips in it there's some flexibility you can keep your chips but you know don't order fresh ones try and use other ones because of course you, you know china doesn't want to torpedo its own chinese companies by being too harsh and wanting too much too quickly it's going to cause businesses to buckle they know that so they won't make those changes a sort of black and white on off switch it's more you know going from white to black over a gray period. It's a gradient, right? But the, the shift is clear, as I keep saying. It's a winding down of Western chip uses, Western chip reliance in favor of Chinese made. Now, what will these Western chips be replaced by? Right? Isn't Western chip technology the best, better than the rest? Muffles absolutely, totally, you know, God's gift to humanity like the Western world is. Who's going to make the chips uh, to power the robots that are going to spend one hour folding laundry that could have been folded by a human being in a solid three minutes? Well, China has an answer to that as well. China has poured more than $100 billion uh, into infrastructure, and now every yuan or dollar uh, of that investment must go to Chinese chip makers, not Western uh, economic, uh, not economic, Western company outposts in China, basically, because, you know, they're being, wind, they're being wound down. Their business is being basically kicked out of the Chinese uh, market. 
So Huawei and Cambricon and others supported by fabricators, domestic fabricators like SMIC, fabricator, not like fabrication of Hadith. It's um, <laughs> fabricators are basically uh, chip factories. Where factories where chips are made are called fabs. Uh, it's fabulous, the naming convention. See what I did there? I know, I'm amazing. So SMIC is the Chinese fabricator. They will be supporting Chinese chip, domestic chip development instead of Taiwan's uh, TSMC, which is, of course, part of the Western economic sphere. How For how long? Who knows? You know, because, you know, reunification might, might not happen. I, I don't know. So these Chinese chip makers, they have the funding. They have the state support. They just need time now to develop uh, better domestic chips. Looking to America, let's briefly touch on their situation, situation, right? Specifically NVIDIA. For them, this is catastrophic. Uh, catastrophic. It's so bad, I've created a new word for them, but one take in it. So for them, it's catastrophic, is what I was trying to say. NVIDIA once held over 90% of China's AI chip market. NVIDIA was the best, nothing among the rest could compete. So they had absolute, you know, market hegemony, right? A monopoly. Whoa. Their CEO recently admitted their China market share is now effectively zero. They've been cut out of the literally, literally, the most populous market for chips in the world. India is more populous uh, in terms of people now, but their industry is way behind China. So it's China and America. These are the two big markets. NVIDIA's just got cut out of one of the two big ones, right? That same CEO also predicts China will win the AI race. Their rate of progress uh, is just greater than America's. So that prediction is quite a fair one to make. Even if you're an American, you know, you, you can be a patriot and you can still say, we're running at two miles an hour. They're running at 10 miles an hour. They're only 20 meters behind us. So they will eventually catch up and then leave us in the dust if things carry on the way they are. It's just common sense, right? Uh, it's not guaranteed, but this is the forecast. So American companies being cut out of the Chinese market, China's uh, industries being given long-term support by their centralized state, and even American uh, company heads like NVIDIA saying, you know, these Chinese guys, they have it. They've got it, right? Half of our CEOs in the U.S., uh, even in the U.S., half of our CEOs are like Chinese, <laughs> ethnically, right? Have you seen the American, like, um, <laughs> robotics teams? They're just... <laughs> Just, just like ethnically Chinese guys, it's just a culture of um, uh, being academically focused and really rigorous. The upbringing from parents is just, is just, is just more strict and leads to better results on paper in the East Asian countries, even in South Asian countries, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. You know, our parents they know doctor, engineer, or failure. These are the three professions that you can end up in. Uh, where do I fall in that? Ooh, ooh let's move on. Let's move on. Uh. Chinese domestic chips are projected to capture 40% of the entire Chinese market by the end of this year. What? 40? It's not even 40% in a year. That's the biggest pivot. Ross Geller would be proud. That's a pivot of a couch if I've ever seen one. That's that's a pivot of colossal expensive you know uh, colossal pro proportions in an industry that's very large very expensive very hard to develop in anyway that's the fastest chip you know table flip with a chessboard and replace that table and quickly put a board of mahjong in place that i've ever seen my imagination does really truly run wild at times now the question is how if at all Will America respond to having their companies locked out of the Chinese market? After all, they were pushing and they were pushing and they were pushing. America was restricting tech being sent uh, or shared or used in China. America told NVIDIA, for example, not to sell their best chips to China, the H100s. Then they said, don't even sell the H20s to them. Sell, sell them something worse. Make sure that they are, you know, rapidly catching up to us. But, you know, restrict them, hobble them as much as you can. So many analysts would suggest that this was a natural outcome, that eventually China would choose to decouple because they're, they're, not, they're not facing, you know, quote-unquote, a fair fight. Not, not hating on America. I understand if you want to keep your rival behind you, you only sell them your worst tech or you don't sell them tech anymore. But um, you, you also have to understand the other side of that, which is oh, eventually they're going to be like, you know what, do you think it's just better if we just try it ourselves? Because these guys are basically... You know, shafting us every every which way. A shocked P Pikachu face from America uh, would be unwarranted. 
I would argue, after all the actions that they have taken to uh, make it difficult for China. Anyway, for the unbiased news and analysis without the Western spin, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mafos slash News Baba.